Hi folks, my name is Trisha Friedman and I want to tour you through our latest free guide. This is community conversations about AI and academic integrity. Now, part of the reason that we've created this free guide is in looking at the research, we are still seeing that lots of folks actually don't even know when they are using AI or when AI, uh, the ways in which it's embedded in their day-to-day -day life. And if we want our students, if we want our community is to be able to advocate for fair and ethical AI, we've got to make sure that they have solid AI literacy. One way that we believe that is going to be possible is when we are slowing down and really talking about how best to use AI when it comes to our learning engagements and assessments. So in part, that is why we've developed this tool. This is the guide process for ensuring academic integrity. So one of the questions that I am getting a lot is, how is it that we are going to support our teachers in reimagining their entire course in this new era of AI? And one thing that I suggest is, don't think about reimagining the entire course at once. Start with one thing. Start with that next assessment and then take our guide tool and have that conversation with students, with your department, with teachers who you work with. So the first is to think about establishing new ground rules for that assessment or that learning engagement. And you might actually use a tool like ChatGPT to do so. So you could go to ChatGPT describe what the learning engagement or assessment is and ask it actually to generate a few ground rules. Then I'm gonna bring those ground rules to my class and we're gonna uncover some new ideas. We're gonna take time to discuss how the generative AI tool supplements the core skills that are essential for that task. Let's look at how the generative AI tool can be used not to do the thinking for us, but to be our thought partner in the process. Then we're going to be thinking about ways that we can schedule what we're referring to as an integrity check-in. This is making sure that we've put some time on the schedule where we're having conversations as a class or as a department where we're saying, okay, uh, these ground rules those skills. Let's maybe tinker with a few things. Uh, let's ask some questions together. Let's share our concerns. If my students are then using a tool like ChatGPT, I want to make sure that they document what they are doing and we have a dialogue around it. So that might be as simple as a Padlet, as a Google Doc, as a Jamboard. It might even be a physical bulletin board in my classroom where I'm inviting students to share what they have prompted, what the output has been so that they are getting in that practice of not only citing chat GPT, but we also get into the practice of using a literacy strategy like lateral reading where we're saying, okay, this was the output. Here's how I fact checked that. And then let's make sure that our students have time to discuss the different results they are seeing. Now let's evaluate together. Let's go back to those initial ground rules and let's see how we can create a final draft of the ground rules and discuss why those updates matter. Now, inside that free guide, I actually have um, a few ChatGPT mega prompts that would get that process started um, to show you what that might look like. I've done that using the AP Human Geography course, but again, you'll have the prompt template so that you can modify it and use it with uh, your specific context. And I also think it's great for us to be thinking alongside of our students and our colleagues, what are some of our beliefs and our attitudes about academic integrity and generative AI. So inside the free guide, again, you're gonna have this as a link where we're thinking about the conversations and questions we need to make more time and space for. What does it mean to think about AI as a supplement? When are the opportunities for it to supplement our learning? How are we gonna have opportunities and make sure that we're respecting sources, that we're checking biases, and that we're reflecting on our independent and interdependent roles for leading 
and navigating our own learning. So that's a tool that's meant to, again, help get the conversation started. You heard me reference earlier that I think it's so important that students get into that routine and habit of having a space to document how they're using the tool. This is so over time, we've got more perspective in terms of how it is a tool that we can incorporate into our learning and also that we're considering how we are able to expand on it. How, again, is a tool like ChatGPT enabling us to really leverage information literacy, to remind us that we have to fact check and then discover new sources and to ask questions. So again, I mentioned that we have three prompts specifically using the AP Human Geography course. So the first prompt is, again, me inviting ChatGPT to basically help redesign an assessment, a formative assessment task. I've given it some parameters in terms of what the assessment's meant to do, what it is meant to value, and I've asked it to give me five ground rules. After I have that output and the output results are inside that free guide, I then ask ChatGPT to use the ground rules to create a list of debates. I want my students to be talking and arguing and questioning these ground rules so that we can generate better ones. I've also asked ChatGPT to create a debate mini script and I've specified in the voice of a 16 year old. And I'm gonna do that specifically because I also want this to be an opportunity for my students to check the bias of ChatGPT. What's it assuming about the voice of a 16 year old? Lastly, I'm asking it to review the assessment and to list the five most essential thinking skills that that assessment invites students to do. Again, that's gonna give us a great opportunity for some debate. And then I'm asking also for each skill, provide a concept that is relevant for the student to understand in order to access the skill and to explain how that concept connects to something in popular culture. Now, all of that is meant to seed discussion. I'm gonna invite my students to contest whether or not those are the right concepts that match with that skill whether the uh, example from popular culture actually matches, because I'm always thinking about this technology as a tool to get back to our human-centered skills, listening skills, analysis. I'm always using this to bring us back to a small group and whole class discussion. So again, the details of what is output in that uh, scenario is there as well as the base template for you to try and to customize it. But I also want to point out inside that free guide is one of our resources. These are three sentence starters where we're use, usualizing not knowing yet, because I also really want my students to get used to the thinking move of having that intellectual humility right now when these tools are very new to us in our learning processes. How are we going to lean into recognizing that we have to do more research, that we have to do more thinking? I think that's important for us to be modeling with our students so that, again, they are also not jumping to assumptions, but really carefully listening to others and to consider alternative perspectives on this. I think many of us are going to have nuanced, complex feelings about this technology. In some places, we're going to see that it has an advantage and others not so much. So in order to kind of hold those varying viewpoints and to be able to toggle back and forth in between them, I think that that uh, menu of three sentence starters, again, helps us with our flexible thinking. We always love hearing from folks. If you use anything from this guide, let us know. The email address is also in the video description. Thanks again.